point of the summer reading contest is to first feed your curiosity about different subjects and second, deepen interest you already have. There are things you can learn about that none of your school teachers will bring up in a standard middle or high school curriculum. And there are things that probably aren't on your radar. I recommend that you use the opportunity to read about things you want to read about and not to slog through articles that you feel you should read. By doing so, you will broaden your horizons, discover new interests, and become knowledgeable about ideas that you're not exposed to at school. It's also likely that you'll stumble upon something to write about that the editors want to read. You see, the New York Times is not just a front page with its breaking international and domestic news about politics, violent crimes, the stock market, and the things that many associate with the newspaper. There's so much more, and all of my students who have won this contest, as well as many of the runners-up and honorable mentions that I taught, did not write about the front page or any of the popular editorials. The New York Times Summer Reading Contest suggests that you check out all of the sections of the newspaper, including the parts that are not written, like videos, multimedia, data, and photos. You can write just about a photograph or a series of photos, an interactive map, or a multimedia travelogue. It's up to you. Let's go through the newspaper and I shall recommend sections that my students have found especially inspiring and which have yielded articles picked by the New York Times editors. International, national, and New York headlines at the top of the paper. This is the cutting news, often political, but also public health, business, and other issues deemed urgent and of interest to the broadest audience. Upper right, a new section with a small selection of varied articles from all parts of the newspaper. This section could be a good fishing spot for articles to comment on because the editors are trying to lure readers to look beyond the headlines. Editorial section, second to the top right-hand side. These are opinion essays by staff writers and distinguished guests such as high office holders, famous writers, academics, or people who are just in the limelight. These are already highly opinionated, so you can argue for or against the thesis or some of the ideas therein, or maybe just provide some nice illustrations from your own experience. In this issue, there's a section entitled The Ransom below the international news. It's a fascinating collection of historical studies of primary manuscripts on Haiti that show how the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere was robbed by American and French institutions. If you're interested in history, politics, economics, finance, or social justice, there are many articles here worth analyzing. There are also follow-up articles to see how the exposed institutions responded to these investigations. Below the special section is a permanent coronavirus bar with data on the pandemic. If you want experience writing about statistics and charts, this is a good training ground to form your own opinions about the course of the pandemic. And you'll see that looking at the data will give you a different perspective on what some of those epidemiologists are saying in the news than just reading their interpretations of it. Like the top right section, the In Case You Missed It section has a variety of articles from all parts of the newspaper. Given that the editors really want to push these articles, it's worthwhile to read some of these and possibly write a response. I particularly like this bar chart article because I do think that for budding writers and responsible citizens, it is important to get used to understanding and interpreting data. You'll get a solid understanding of issues such as public health that will open your eyes. There's a lot of purposeful distortion of reality now on social media and even in the press. Here's your chance to get a clear picture that you form on your own. The rest of these articles look interesting. Uh, an article on the city's friendliest to biking might yield a response essay about your own experiences cycling in your town or a response about the environment or city planning. Russia's shrinking war might give you an opportunity to vent your opinions on the limits of imperialism in the 21st century. And this piece on fast fashion could enable you to think about locally made clothing versus sweatshop clothing the environmental and social issues around fast fashion, or the ethics of buying. Lots of possibilities here. 
Next down on the left, there are articles related to business, domestic politics, and what I would call the more conventional news stories. Mainly bad news. And below this section is called more news, that is more of the same with broad appeal. This section is good to read to become well informed and broaden your horizons, but you might have to go for a run or do your yoga after. Below we have the fitness section, good self-help, but I have yet to see a winner write a response to one of these. Here's the cooking section. I did read a rather interesting winning essay to the contest on pineapple pizza once, so this could have some potential, although it's pretty rare to win writing a food article for these contests. Here's a book review with a pretty picture. One of the triumphs of the modern digital newspaper, particularly the Times, is the incredible high resolution photographs. They help to see the art, like in this piece, which is a book review about the journey of a Leonardo da Vinci painting through the course of half a millennium. The paper takes great pride in their culture stories and especially the quality of the photos that go with them. So do spend some time analyzing the images and use them in your responses. Below the word games, you'll find all of the sections of the newspaper represented with the topic, a photograph from one of the articles, and a choice of three articles for each section. This allows you to get a snapshot of what the editors consider to be the most important or eye-catching articles from each section. The top contains the usual newspaper stories ranging from international news to national and New York specific and business, then tech, science, sports, obituaries. I don't remember any winners from the sports sections, but I do think if you like sports, you can write about them. Just try to write about the more meaningful topics in athletics rather than wins and losses, plays or training. The Upshot has those data-driven articles I recommend for getting a clearer idea on many things. I thought this one on the US's foreign aid money to Ukraine was especially illuminating. You can see how all the different things that the money is going to, how much of the federal budget it comprises, and how it relates to other domestic spending and foreign aid. You can see how eye-opening the data is. The US spent three times more than the entire European Union an economic block whose GDP is 6% larger than our own. The next chart shows how the richest country in Europe, Germany, is one of the least generous countries in the West. The most generous countries are the Eastern European countries that border Russia or Ukraine. Charts like this allow you to see the difference between the rhetoric of politicians and the reality. They enable you to see beyond the political rhetoric clogging the media, who is putting their money where their mouth is, as the old adage goes. Obituaries are often overlooked, but I think a wonderful section for young people. It basically allows you to see all the different ways that people have lived their lives and gives you the ideas for what your own life can look like. Some of these science articles can be mind-blowing. The Times loves its photos and the images do help to see the story that is being told here about the shattered pieces of that extremely battered rocky planet nearest to the sun, Mercury. The pictures tell the story. The cratered planet suggesting it has been battered, the shards of rock found in France, which are a chemical composition similar to what Mercury would have been billions of years ago. Are you good at science? I don't think it matters. The science articles are for a general educated audience. The amazement or curiosity that they elicit is a good starting point for a successful response. Read the articles here and in the technology section, and you can prepare for the Times' Winter STEM contest, which is a writing contest as well about science, technology, engineering, and math. As you can see, climate and the environment are a separate section from science, and given the urgent nature of the issues, it's worthwhile to write a response to an article from this section once during the course of the summer, at least. A lot of students like to write about education, but they tend to just Google articles that fit with their concerns. This meant that last year and in 2020, there were a lot of responses to the same topics like online education and mask mandates at school. I would suggest you approach education differently and just read the issues that the editors deem to be important rather than focusing narrowly on your own educational pet peeves and obsessions. 
The Reader Center is new and it's a place for people to suggest things that interest them to the editors, to find articles that they deem to be particularly well written, and to read about what's going on behind the scenes at the Times. Opinion pieces here uh, include a few more than we saw from the different sections of the newspaper. The Sunday Review will have especially interesting, lengthier pieces, and guest essays will bring in experts that go beyond the usual names in the editorial section on the front page. I especially recommend the Arts section because it will take you beyond the usual news articles, and the contest judges want student essays that will represent the spectrum of cultural forms and important issues that may not get much attention at your school or in society at large. This article about the singer Oliver Sim hits both. It's about a singer who has recently come out as HIV positive, composed songs and a short film on this. Listen to the songs and watch the embedded videos here. Remember, the New York Times wants you to look beyond just the text, but also at image and sound, and they will reward students accordingly. This section will allow you to explore topics that go beyond what you learn about in school. Theater, dance, movies, art and design, or television. Take the opportunity to explore what interests you and also deepen your appreciation of things that you are already curious about. Here's an example about art that I think is especially fascinating and it has pretty pictures. Remember to look at the art closely though, don't just quickly scroll through. It's about the paintings that art buyers at auctions have paid the most for, far more than was expected. Some are artists that you may not have heard of, but this Andy Warhol silkscreen, not even an oil painting, sold for $195 million. Wow! You can write a fascinating response about your ideas, about the particular appeal of these works that fetch so much over the offering price. Remember, we will come back in subsequent videos to explore all these options more thoroughly. The Style Magazine is another great treasure trove. You'll find pieces on art, fashion, interior design, decorative arts, and fine arts. The photographs will inspire you. Also check out the Style section. The New York Times magazines, there are several, travel, real estate, and love. Love is particularly interesting. You'll find wedding stories and vows. The New York Times has included love between many different kinds of people and in many forms, so this can expose you to the lives of people like the obituaries, the likes of which you may never have met in your community. The modern love section is also here, and these are autobiographical essays about many different kinds of love romantic, familial, friendship, just about as many kinds of loves as the mind can conceive. I also highly recommend this section. I don't particularly think the wellness section is great for a response essay because it tends to elicit self-help type of essays from students, and that's not what the judges want. At the bottom of the website, you'll find all the sections listed. Remember, I recommend the style section because it will expand your mind beyond what you learn about in school. It will allow you to explore things that are important to your social or aesthetic life. Here's a very interesting example on luxury brand knockoffs for those who want to learn about the psychology of prestige and wealth aspiration, the relationship of high fashion and street fashion, and to learn a little bit about trademark law in fashion. If you scroll down to the very bottom of the web page, you'll find all the sections of the newspaper. Travel is worth looking at, and you'll be sure to find some great photos. I'm clicking on this one about Los Angeles, which is not just about travel, but also about change to the amenities of the city, including food, restaurant design, and the culture of dining out, nightlife, museums, and the performing arts. While it may seem just like something to expand one's going out horizons if you live in LA or are traveling there, you could write about this article in terms of thinking of changes to the soul of a city, uh, talking about the transformation, what and how people eat, and even the aesthetics of public spaces in one of the world's iconic cities. That wraps up our general exploration of the different sections to read and write about for the New York Times Reading Contest and the Editorial Contest. I'll be taking you through sample articles that have won this contest or been distinguished out of thousands of submissions for runner-up status or honorable mention. 
These are all my students winning articles and my fun and effective strategies to write authentic and elegant pieces.